Hi everyone, Susan Winter. Welcome to another episode of Love Advice. I am so happy to have you all here with me. So I have new lights today. I'm trying to get used to them. I think they're very bright. We'll be playing around with them a little bit today. Thank you everyone who's joined me. I really, really appreciate it. Today we are going to discuss how to create a healthy love. Now I realize that many of you who know about manifestation and you know about creating your reality, you know that you want a healthy love. Many of you are in a partnership and you'd like it to be even better. The issue starts to occur for us when we haven't had a template for what a healthy love looks like. It is possible that through your family of origin, you were not exposed to a healthy form of love. In my book, Allowing Magnificence, I talk about a gal that I know who came to me. She was a colleague, but she came to me a lot as far as um, you know, consultation with love. And this is long before I did this business. And I realized that she had no idea what love was. She only knew one thing that felt like love, and that was attention. She got attention when she was sick. So... Is it surprising that she ended up with a double mastectomy? Is it surprising that she's been plagued by illness most of her life? Now, she does this work. She very consciously does this work. But these are some of the things that we have to look beyond. It is hard for her to know what healthy love looks like because she never had it, never had it from her caregivers. So what we're going to talk about today is how you can identify what a healthy love looks like, even if you've never seen it. Even if your parents, your caregivers did their best, but their best was all they knew and it wasn't sufficient. So let me start by thanking everybody who's joined in today. Ava and Alex Flips are going to be my moderators. I'm really thankful for that. Jennifer, hi, how are you doing? Um, Jillian, hi from D.C., um, so happy that you're live today, especially about this topic. Yes, you know, I really do pay attention to what you guys say you want to hear. And I realized that, you know, we spent, oh, I don't know, seven or eight weeks talking about COVID and COVID dating. Then we spent another six or eight weeks talking about all the bizarre things that people do that are wrong, all the bad behavior. And then I wanted to go more into these extended topics. And I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. I'm checking my hair. I know you keep going, Susan, your hair looks fine. I'm looking at a monitor that just is me in a mirror. So that's why this is happening. Oh, hi, Toronto. How are you doing? Uh, good morning, everybody. Hi, Susan. You're fabulous. Thank you for your honest and valuable videos. My trip in love. Thank you for that. Madam Butterfly, hi, from Cyprus. Oh, my goodness. So it's snowing here today in New York, and it is so beautiful. It is that um, those big, fat slow dropping flakes and it's just, I love it, I love it, I love it. And Nika, she's a Pomsky. You all know little white Nika, right? She's second generation. She's supposed to be 50-50. I mean, she had pure Pomsky parents, right? So she's supposed to be all Pomsky. I think she's got a teaspoon of a Husky because I took her out in the snow yesterday and she looked at it like, oh, I'm not having this. And my sled dog, the first time she saw snow as a puppy, was I couldn't get her out of the snow banks. It's like, oh, I'm home, rolling and taking the snow and pushing it up with her nose. So anyway, um, off to the subject. It's just, it's so beautiful. Um, okay, so hi from Phoenix. Hi, Kat. How are you doing? I'll be in warm weather shortly. Um, hello, uh, Fatima. Hi, Nat. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm really, oh, hi, uh, Angelique. Hi, Susan. I'm really happy that I caught some of these live streams. So let me share with all of you what I think are five signs of how to be in a healthy partnership. First, let me tell you what you do not feel. When you're in a healthy partnership, you do not feel scared. You do not feel like you're walking on eggshells. You do not feel terrified. You do not feel afraid to speak up. You do not feel weak, insecure, and a non-priority. You will have challenges. New relationships always have challenges. And adjusting to each other 
and learning how to be together day in and day out after the honeymoon phase, yes, those are challenges. But you will find that when you have a conflict, you tend to get back to resolution. If you do not feel these things, you are not in a healthy relationship. Now, there's a difference between us being generally scared that we're insecure, we're scared, we don't feel good, we have a lot of negative baggage that we carry with us. And then the obvious fear from being in a relationship where we are unsupported. So here are some of the things that you can institute yourself. And here are some of the things that you can look for. So let's start with the first. These seem so old school, I can't even believe I have to bring them up again. But let me start with respect. There's a lot to be said for respect, mutual respect. Respect means I don't have to agree exactly with what you say. I don't have to agree with a lot of things. But overall, I need to admire you as a person and I need to show respect for your individuality. I may not understand why you choose a certain kind of music. I may not be fully aware of some of the rituals for your religion that even you think are foolish, but I need to honor them and to respect them. So respect is essential. Do any of you have a situation right now that you wanna talk about that deals with respect? If so, I'm gonna start reading. I'll take each one of these. I will answer your questions on these and then I'll open it up to the general questions to anything you wanna talk about. So, hi, Victoria, Patrick, uh, Moonlight in the Pony, okay. Uh, let's see, anything else? Alex flips, communication. Alex, it's in here, it's the third one. You read it perfectly. East Coast snow, yeah, okay, Susan. He knows and admits to making the rule, ooh. Alifnur says, Susan, he knows it and admits to making the relationship unhealthy. He has disappeared on me and left me on read for weeks. Then he came back saying he made a mistake. I don't know what to think. Well, you do know what to think. You know what to think. You know that that's not right. You, you don't buy it. There is no excuse for that. So here's what I suggest you do, because honestly, you got nothing to lose here. I would be very straightforward with this person and I would say, look, this is disrespectful. I wouldn't do it to you. I don't leave you on read. I don't just disappear on you. And if I did, would you honestly want to talk to me when I come back? I don't think you would. So what would make me want to talk to you? Then you give him a chance, say, look, maybe nobody has ever told you this. Maybe you're unaware of it. Maybe you don't know how to be in a relationship. This is what I need. So now that I've told you, if you want to proceed with me, if you want me to care about you, this is what I need. And then you see if they'll do it. Okay, what else do we have here? That's a great question. Respect is answering phone calls and calling back. Patrick, yes, 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 of course. I uh, Right. Uh, do you leave if they won't respect boundaries as simple as sex or making decisions? See, the minute that they, they don't respect your boundaries, they don't respect you. And it shows you that you're with a very selfish person because their desire, their temporary desire for momentary pleasure is more important than your ongoing agony. What's up with that? Yeah, I would. You guys, don't be afraid to cut and run. Nobody on this channel in my tribe lacks the ability to love. Nor do you lack compassion, empathy, or higher consciousness. So I'm very clear that when you guys are writing me something like this, you have tried. That's what I think. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh, okay, that was a great question. Uh, thank you, L M L M L B M thirteen. Thank you. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, let's see, Costa Rica. Hi, Luis. Uh, boo, disappearing is disrespectful. Right, right. I want someone who respects me, but I'm scared to submit and be treated like a doormat. Is this childhood trauma or? past failed relationships. So if someone respects you, 
how could you be treated like a doormat? And where does the word submit come in here? That's a little weird. We don't want a power trip here. You know, in a healthy relationship, you've got somebody that cares for you and they want to be an equal partner. I think, I think we need to work on your understanding of what healthy partnership is. And maybe you haven't seen it before. Okay, so that is what respect is. I'll read one more. Um, I'm going to get back to this later because this is about communication. Okay, uh, let's see, Patricia. Nope. You're right. Do the same stuff they do to you, then give them a taste of their own medicine. See how it feels. Okay, that's another way for doing it. Um, okay, the second thing is honesty. Now, those of you who are drawn to my channel, you know I like to be straight up and I like to be honest. I don't have a problem with that. Here's the truth about relationships. And ladies, this is especially true for men, but it's true for all of us. We can never feel loved if we don't feel safe to be ourselves. And being safe to be ourselves means that we can share the truth of who we are. So everybody's got a thing. Like, they've got a thing. What was it? Miranda in Sex and the City, her thing was to read gossip columns or trashy, like, stupid papers of celebrity news. Somebody so intelligent and so uptight in many ways. And yet that was her way to relax. So I think we have to allow and create actually create within our relationship an environment where our partner knows that honesty is more important to us than dishonesty. You see, every young guy, and I've used this statement numerous times, but ladies listening, you have to hear this. Every young guy that ever made a mistake from denting his dad's car to throwing a baseball through the neighbor's window has learned that the repercussion for telling the truth is punishment. Maybe you have too. Maybe you, as the girl, threw the baseball through the window, and maybe you banged up your dad's car, and you lied about it because you knew you'd be punished severely. That's from your family of origin. But if you carry that forward into your relationship, and you create an environment where it is unsafe for your partner to tell you the truth, what you will end up with is a partner who hides things from you. That means there is never conflict resolution. There is never getting to the end of something. There is never a safety net. I used to say to my partners, I would rather you tell me the truth. I would rather hear something that hurts me and hurts my feelings that I don't want to hear than find out that I'm living a fantasy that you led me to believe. That will be excruciating. So once we set an environment for truth-telling, and the truth-telling means that you are promising to be objective. Now, I'm not saying your partner is clear on doing this. All it takes is one. And if you guys can start by being the example, you can institute this in your relationship and create a healthy dynamic for honesty. So those of you who are in something now, you got a something, something, you got a something that's not working, you got a, you got a something, you've got a husband, you got a wife, you've got a whatever you've got. You can activate all of these principles that I'm going to talk about today. You can start today, no matter where you think you are in your relationship. You may be starting a new relationship or in an existing one. You can actually institute a policy. You say to your partner, look, babe, I've got a feeling that we can have much better communication. And part of doing that is to let you know that you are safe to tell me the stuff you're afraid to tell me. And I'm gonna do the same to you. Our, I think the only way that this is effective is if we don't judge each other, we actually try to listen and understand. And then we know what we're working with. So it's really important when somebody tells you the truth about themselves to be non-judgmental because that's beating them up. And if you want them to shut up and never tell you the truth again, you just make that scowl face or you give them that dismissive look or you give them the look like they're disgusting. And trust me, they'll never tell you again. So let's see what we have to say here about honesty. Anybody got anything to say about honesty? Respecting a person's organic growth and not being afraid of messing up, but offering space to be just where you're at. Now I know why you guys are my audience because you're so smart. I love this, love this, love this. Um, Patrick, I've never had luck with women. Hang in there. We got some great women here. They can help you as well. Mutual respect, Ava Hart, my moderator. You're awesome. Thank you. Susan, love your chats. You're awesome. Thank you, Colin. 
Um, thank you, Susan, and everyone commenting. You can't imagine how much this helps. So I just thought of this. In a way, we have a safe environment. I have moderators here because I've had comments from all of you that once in a while we have a troll come on and somebody tried to disrupt your good time. And I don't want that to happen. However, for the most part, we do know that somebody can come on here and have a different opinion. That's fine. I never, if you read the feed, I don't block people's differing opinions. They are welcome to criticize or have a different opinion. That's fine. I never remove them. Sometimes if I think they've misunderstood what I've said, I will correct them. But I don't eliminate those comments so that there are only good comments. Um, so I think it's important that we try to listen through. Sometimes it's semantics. Sometimes what somebody's telling us, we think we don't agree with. And then when we come to the end of the discussion, we're like, oh, my God, they just used different words. Now I know exactly what they're saying. So thank you all. Um, so we have a safe environment here for you to speak your truth. Um, that word submit can be another word for controlling or perhaps insecure issues. Patrick, you're right. That's another thing. Uh, I will get to, so anybody who's sending me a comment about generic questions, let's do this later at the half hour. I want to get through these things first. I'll be happy to see it. Um, no one is entitled to your energy or time. Prioritize yourself over anyone else. Your feelings do matter. You deserve to be loved and fought for too. Yes, that's correct. Um, Fat Fatima, do you have to have these in place before entering a relationship? It would be lovely, but not necessary. You can correct while in a relationship. If you have good material, your partner will escalate upwards with you. If you have inferior material, your partner will only want the level at which they came in, which means they are unwilling to grow. So those of you who are here have a growth mindset. You may find that as you institute some of these healthy policies in your relationship, your partner, either it's too difficult, or they don't know, or it feels like work, <laughs> don't want to do it. So then you're like, oh, okay, I just realized my time with you is limited. Um. How do you learn how to love? I only know how to take care of. Not to worry, sweetie, you're halfway there. Uh, nurturing is a form of love. It's one aspect of love. Um, these are hard definitions for all of us, as is God. You know, it, it's, this is very, life is individual our understanding and interpretation of the message of life and our duty here or joy here is quite unique to us. What love is, is what you have seen. You have seen duty and sacrifice and nurturing. That must be what your mother or father or somebody in your family did that proved that they were invested. That is one very dominant trait. And that's kind of, if you, if you did the five love languages, that would be service, you know, acts of service. But there are many other languages. It could also be play. So for those who always nurture, sometimes they don't know that they have a right to play. Um, let's see. Okay, safe to be my authentic self. Oh my God, this is so brilliant. I love this. Thank you, Ava. Um, okay, so now you know about honesty. You have a right to set a template for being honest. Show your partner it's okay to tell the truth. You may not like what you hear, but you'd rather know what you're working with. Because if you make them feel bad and they have to hide something, they're going to have a secret life within this relationship, okay? Three, Alex, communication. Communication is exceedingly important. Most times when you get uncomfortable in a new relationship, you guys don't talk to each other. You just back off and assume. So you all know that we're doing best worst date, right? And uh, we've, uh, uh, we are now editing the entire uh, video. 
We'll have it released in three different um, episodes, and we'll give you a teaser next week. We're going to load that for you. Um, but what I discovered in Best Worst State, the reason I did it is everybody deserves a second chance. Sometimes you don't show up and shine the way you want to. So communication, especially in new relationships, is so important because we tend to get scared and misunderstand. We think uh, when they said privacy, we thought that was code for, oh, um, don't follow me too much. Don't uh, talk to me too much. Um, don't pester me with text messages. You know, we can easily misassume. Communication is very important. So start with the most basic form of communication. I feel, I'd like, I don't understand. You know, ask questions. If you don't know, ask. I had an 18 year old guy tell me that. I said, Susan, if you wanna know, ask me. This was about another topic, but I thought, oh my God, how these kids get so brilliant. How do they get so brilliant? This was not this was not a relationship. I don't have relationships with kids like that. But I mean, this was it was just so interesting because he was so young, and he said it just like uh, you take a left, like that's what left is. I mean, it was so brilliant. So don't be afraid to speak up. What I see the most happening in the millennial time period is a ton of people going mute. You're afraid to speak because you don't feel comfortable, but you're afraid to ask. So you continue to feel uncomfortable, then we start the distancing dance. In order to break it, somebody has to speak up and say, look, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like I, I really enjoyed us talking on a regular basis and I'm not sure what happened, something happened, I haven't heard from you and I really like talking to you. Did something happen? Do you, is there something you wanna share with me? We have to start communicating, all right? All right, so what do you have? Susan, is it true that the only way to help create healthy love with another person is to create healthy relationship with yourself. Certainly helps. I know that there are people who love and love deeply and have no idea how to love themselves. We get to a more balanced form of love when we love ourselves. That's the difference. If we don't know how to love ourselves, our tendency will be to give away everything and try and beg and earn their love. <laughs> Am I good enough? Am I okay? If I do this for you, if I do that, if I make myself indispensable, but then will you love me? Will you love me? Will you love me? And then that's, you're going to be so unhappy. All right. So I'm going to continue on. Then we're going to open up this discussion to anything you guys want to say, because the point is, of course, to talk to all of you. Um, number four. Trust. We have to trust. Don't, I'm not asking you to trust blindly. I'm asking you to allow there to be trust in your relationship until you are given proof to the contrary. Beginning relationships, new relationships require the willingness to believe. You're not going to be a fool. You may discover you've been played. Nobody can help you in that but we want you to at least have the willingness to try, to walk into the relationship, look for the best outcome. If you start a relationship thinking nobody can be trusted, all people are bad, they're going to lie to me, it's not going to be good, what are you gonna get? You're going to get exactly what you think and what you believe, right? So we have to trust to a certain degree until you are given proof otherwise. Now, let me look at some questions on this and see what we have. Trust is not one dimensional. Sometimes your partner really thinks he is telling the truth. That's true. But asking further, he discovers that his truth is different on a subconscious level. Okay, that's a little deep. Yes, Van, uh, Van L. Yes, of course. Um, so telling the truth, telling our truth, depends on our ability to discern our truth. So this is why we work on ourselves. We work on ourselves so that we know how we are built and then we can share that with our partner. When we know how we function, I share my control panel with my mate. And I even tell them where the missiles are gonna go off. If you push this button, I will come after you. Do not push this button, I'm telling you now. And if they tinker around with it, then I know they did it maliciously, okay? So we try to know ourselves 
so that we can present the truth of who we are to our partner so that we have a better relationship. Mystery is not good in a committed relationship. Mystery as far as where do I stand? Do they love me? Am I safe? Can I tell the truth? What are they thinking? What's happening here? That kind of mystery is confusion. Mystery as far as retaining a sense of your own individual life and privacy, a segment of yourself that's uniquely yours, that's okay. Many people are absolutely devoted to that to a greater or lesser degree. But you need to be in honest communication with your partner so that they will in turn feel generous enough to be in honest communication with you. So it shows your partner that you trust them enough to be forthcoming, okay? One more, and this is one of my favorites, and it's appreciation. And I'm gonna get to the $20 in just a minute. Hang on, I thank you so much. Yes, everybody, you can do super chat. I do appreciate that. I just wanna get through these five points. Appreciation. If your relationship is currently stale, if you're seeing somebody and you think it's dropping off, and I'm not saying I'm not saying commend somebody for bad behavior, but take a look at when was the last time you told your mate, your partner, your lover, your crush, you know, wow, you're fantastic. Oh my God, you did such a great job there. Wow, you really look good today. Did I ever tell you how much I admire your kindness? I see you work with other people and you are so thoughtful. When was the last time you gave verbal acknowledgement or appreciated or said thank you or did something nice for your partner? Something completely for them and not for your benefit. And if you haven't done it recently, please do it because John Gottman, this brilliant psychotherapist, the Gottman Institute, you guys, it's great. Look it up. Um, he has the five to one principle, which is that for every one infraction, every one hurt that your partner makes, like harmful, cruel thing, insensitive thing that they did. It takes five positive forms of appreciation to erase it, to even it out. Five to one. So you got to do five good things to erase your bad thing. Just saying. So please never discount appreciation. And I've heard from many clients. I remember this lady said, you she's so hysterical. She goes, you want me to give him a prize for 10th place? Like he did something he was supposed to do. And I said, yeah, I do. Or leave. That's it. Because I'd heard her whole story. And I said, you're going to have to start with 10th place and give him enough prizes so he works up to wanting to be number one. Because right now, what you've got is what you've gotten. When we get off the phone, if you don't do anything different, that's what you're going to get tomorrow and the next day. And I said, try it. Just, just try it. Tell me how it goes. She wrote back, OMG. Explanation point. It worked. It's like, yeah, it does. Okay. Now I can see I've got super chat, you guys. Quickly, we did respect, honesty, communication, trust, and appreciation. Super chats. I'm here for you now. We're going to open it up. Whatever you want to say, here we go. Yes, it's time to ask a question. Wendy, $20. Thank you, my darling. Susan, clients. Oh, you're a oh, you therapist? Um, or, or you're in. Um, um, give us a little. Tell us what your uh, website is so we know who you are. Wendy, um, Susan, I, uh, clients I work with have been with cheating partners in the past and are petrified of being cheated on by their current partner. Of course, it's like PTSD. How do you both work through the consuming fear and work on having a healthy relationship? So this is two parts. One is mental. Not every person cheats. And ladies, I don't know why, but I have attracted some of the best men. Even the bad boys were good versions of themselves. And maybe it's because I know that there are men who choose to be faithful. It is a choice. It is a choice. But what I can tell you, Wendy, and you know from working with your clients as well, 
is that the more they fixate on, is he cheating? Is he cheating? Is he cheating? I've had guys tell me, Susan, I don't want to cheat, but I mean, she's driving me crazy. I go to the gym. Where are you? I'm in a board meeting. It's like, where are you? Are you coming home? Are you with somebody? I've had guys say to me, you know, I'm so tired of trying to prove I'm a good guy. I got to pick up the slack for everybody else. I'm exhausted and it makes me want to cheat just so she gets her way. So Wendy, you and I both know as relationship experts, I'm assuming that's what you are or a therapist. We have to make a compelling uh, argument to our client about the benefits of erasing their past. We don't forget, we don't become blind, we don't blow through red flags, but if we want to start anew, we need to start with a new mentality and imagine that this is what we've had in the past that is a certain kind of person, but we are no longer attracting that kind of person. So you look for somebody who is ethical pretty much straight across the board. You look for somebody who in their code of being you know, wouldn't be happy with themselves. They don't even cheat on their taxes, really. They don't, you know, like, they don't get away with stuff. Like, they see a $20 bill on the ground, and they're like, oh, my God, who dropped it? You know, it, it, that kind of person is is going to have more of a profile of it's a choice, and it's a, it, it is a moral compass question, okay? Plus, also, for your client to tell her future partners, this has been my issue, I am working through this. I am with a counselor on this. There will be times that I may look a little goosey around this and bear with me as I learn that you are not them. Okay. Thank you very much. Great, great, great question. Thank you for the $20 contribution. I appreciate that. Okay. 999. Hi, Audrey. How are you? Why is it that when there are positive and healthy signs of love in a relationship, but saying, I love you seems like a much bigger commitment in a new relationship. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, how people are so hesitant to say these words. God, I don't know why this became such an issue. I've noticed this over the last 20 some years that people belabor, oh my God, did I say it? Or you'll have a client call you in a panic, like, I was hanging up the phone and I don't know what I did. I said, I love you. And I was like, oh my God, did I say I love you? Are they gonna drop me? Are they gonna leave me because of it? Uh, and then I've had people say, love you. And I know it's just rote. So I think we have to stop being so uptight about this. And the reason people are is similar saying, I love you calls up the similar fears of you're in a relationship. This is why people want to skirt the emotional responsibility and stay in a situationship where they don't need to accommodate somebody's feelings. Meaning if I hurt you, uh, I'm really sorry about that, but you know, I'm not really your boyfriend or girlfriend. We're not really a couple. So you don't really have a right to tell me that I'm responsible for this. So a lack of responsibility keeps people out of relationships. And there is, in the same way, there is a fear that the minute you say, I love you, now there are additional responsibilities that go along with that, okay? This is why people avoid the word and nobody wants to be rejected. What if they're the first ones that say it? Now, I don't have an issue with owning what I feel. Um, I don't mind being the first one to say it. I don't like it if I don't hear the same back right away, but it hasn't killed me. So I think it's better that if you know, listen, what you're telling me is that day in and day out, you feel love but you haven't heard the words. So feeling that you're loved is far more important than hearing the words. I would rather it be this way than the other way around. Now, some people really put a huge premium after six months or a year. They haven't heard I love you. It means that their relationship isn't a real relationship. So I think that's kind of ridiculous. There are some individuals who do not express themselves verbally. I would find that impossible for my own romantic design, but you might be involved with somebody like that. But are they the ones that pick you up when, at, from the airport? Are they the ones who are there immediately if you're in the hospital? Are they concerned about you? Do they love you? You know, so that's what's important. Okay, so that's what that's all about. Thank you so much, Audrey, for this contribution. I do appreciate that. So let me look. Um, 
for me, loving others is a part of where did this go? I missed it. Oh, James, my God, I missed you. These don't all come up. I feel terrible. James, 100. Thank you, my dear. How to set boundaries when your ex-partner is honest, but these are topics such as fantasizing other people, confusion, negative thoughts of future. Hang on here. I do not know how to answer this. I am sorry because it's a little confusing linguistically for me. How to set boundaries with an ex-partner. First of all, I don't know why you need to. Okay, maybe you're getting back with this ex-partner is honest, but these are topics such as fantasizing. I think you mean fantasizing about other people, negative thoughts about the future. Okay, um, I think what you are saying is, great, this person is finally honest. I really am terrified by what I'm hearing. I think this is what I'm getting from you, James. So in that case, I'd say, hmm, James, I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. And you've asked them to be honest. And now they're telling you everything you don't want to hear. Which would you rather not have this information, stay with them and wonder why you're so miserable and always have it in the back of your mind or know straight up what's going on? because now you have a choice. Before you had a suspicion, now you have a choice. True, you've asked them to be honest. These are deal breakers for you. Maybe also, because it's hard for me to understand what this means, maybe what you're also implying is, is there a point where honesty should stop? Some people believe in brutal honesty. I don't need to hear my partner explain to me, wow, Susan, that woman is incredibly hot. I would like to get all over that. No, you can kindly keep that thought to yourself. I don't need to hear that. So that's a boundary. If you want to talk about whom you're attracted to, what your fantasies are, I don't need to hear them unless you think you want to bring this into our relationship. And this is vital information I need to also be happy in our romantic life. Then share it with me. Let me see if I'm on board with that. Okay, I think I've I think I've I've guessed my way through the many implications here. I hope I did. Thank you so much for your contribution. I'm going to go back and see if I missed any other super chats. If I did miss your super chat, let me know and I will catch it at the top of when this goes live. Oh, and you guys about the adverts. I've got to say this. I've got to say this. I set it to automatic. And that means Google is going to put in their ads when they want to. If you set it to manual, people may not want to buy it, but they, I get, everybody does it in a buy for all of it. Now, that can take three to four hours. It can take 12 hours. It can take three days. You may notice that you watch these. There are no adverts. Then you may notice, you see one, there's like one every five minutes. That's because whatever the timing was, I got busy. They did it at two in the morning. I didn't know about it. I get up the next day and I see like 40 of these things. I start taking them out. I take them out manually. So do understand, I'm not trying to torture you with 400 adverts to stop you watching. When they go in is unknown. And if I go to bed and wake up and you've just watched it at a time that I was busier with a client and I didn't have time to come back and check, that's what you're going to get. But they will be fixed. Just wanted to clear that up for everyone. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Andre, we've done this. Uh, let's see. Alex flips. That would be the trust part. Alex, I do adore you. You're so sweet. Okay. Saying I love you comes with a responsibility, Mark. That is true. If you're really just in love and don't really love the person, don't say you love them. Yeah. This is why they, people are worried about their personal responsibility. Peachy question. Susan, how do I establish a healthy relationship if I'm insecure and have post-trauma with toxic people? I don't even know what real love or healthy relationship is supposed to feel like. True. This is the most difficult part of manifestation, whether it is that you are creating a company that has never existed, you are creating a product that the world has never seen, or you are creating a love for which you have no template. So, we start from scratch and we look for evidence of what feels joyous. 
in the outside world. I want you to take snapshots in your mind of what looks like loving moments. I don't care if it's a Hallmark greeting card of a couple holding hands or somebody looking thoughtfully at their mate or somebody with their hand on their back, reassuring them. You build a composite of things you would like to experience and that becomes your template. You can also listen to shows like this. You've had trauma in the past. So the easiest way for me to say is look for the opposite. Look for the opposite of everything you've experienced. Look for its exact opposite. You were walking on eggshells, you feel comfortable. You never thought you were good enough, this person makes you feel fabulous. Just look for the opposite and chances are you'll be right. $5, Samantha, for nothing. Darling, where are you? Happy to answer your questions, but thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Susan, you are great. Otonio, thank you so much. Um, being a Bowman, I wrongly assumed that he lost interest when he was feeling very confused about us. Turns out he was feeling overwhelmed and stressed about life in general. Bad at communication or move on. Bad at communication, the fact is somehow you know now. So do not assume your partner knows what's going on. You guys, you have to be willing to teach your partner how to understand you. And if they are leveling up to where you are, you've got to give them some instruction. But give them, give them instruction that doesn't sound like an instruction. You can let them know honestly, sweetie, I, here's what I, I love when you do this, this, and this. Here's what I've discovered. I really like it when you tell me how you feel. When you tell me you need space, you know, my head here is, oh, I am so leaving this relationship. Can you help me to understand that from where you're at? What does that mean? I want to know what that means. I'm not fighting you. I want to give you the space you need, but I just don't understand. You know, get to clarity. And I'm not saying a lot of space is okay. I'm not saying your partner can walk away for a month. This is not okay. I'm just saying ask for clarity. Ask that you know um, to, if you don't know, if they don't know, start guessing. Say, do you mean this? Do you mean that? Do you mean that you miss hanging out with your friends? Do you mean that you need two hours every night to just like read a book and, and decompress from the day? Just, just tell me what it is, okay? Uh, thank you, Susan, being Bowman. You are welcome. Uh, Samantha, here we go. Would you talk about codependency in relationships? Yes. That is where I need you to make me feel okay about myself. That is where I have no sense of owning my own feelings and leading and guiding and being proactive. Every cue I take is from you. You feel uncomfortable, I'm uncomfortable. You're unhappy today, I must be unhappy today. I must be the exact mirror to you or I will not gain your love. I have to contort my life to match what you want and need. That means I'm living every cue, watching the slightest movement of your eyebrow. It is a post-traumatic stress syndrome ongoing response that you've got in codependency. Codependency means I don't have my own emotions. I am so invested in you. I don't know the difference between you and me. And I probably feel more about your life than you do. Uh, we can see codependent mothers. We can see codependent partners of people who have substance addictions that think that they can heal them or think they have to heal them or think they need to fix them. Uh, so codependency is something that there, listen, there are people that are far better at this than I am. Melody Beattie wrote the classic book in the nineties, codependent no more. And if you want to read up on that, please do. But in, in the simplest terms, it means you are taking every cue from your partner and you are not listening to yourself. So our job here on this channel is to help you to tune into yourself and make your antenna strong and clear and to hear what you feel and get in unity with yourself so that you are empowered, proactive, honest. You're not afraid to speak up. You're not terrified. You know what you feel. You know how to express what you feel. 
you have the balls to say what you feel and let the chips roll where they may. And you trust yourself enough that even if your mate doesn't understand, you can recover verbally by clarifying. No, I didn't mean that, sweetie. Here's what I mean. So when you can come to that point of articulation and communication and love and honesty and transparency, you've got a pretty good formula for a good relationship. Now, relationships involve another person. This is where it gets dicey. You could be a fabulous partner already. You may be an incredible partner with tons of relationship skills and you're choosing people that aren't at your level. And if that's happening, you've got to go up, evolve upward and start choosing again and make your selection, selection process much more specific. Okay. Um, how can I be more responsible with my feeling? How, wait, this goes so fast. Hang on here. How can I be more responsible with my feelings and have the balls to say what I feel? Just do it. You know, for most of you, what have you got to lose? You know, here's, here's what it comes down to. There will be a point in whatever you've got with somebody that you are so miserable that your back is in the corner. Does it really matter what happens next? At least try. So if you have to begin to identify your emotions, um, there are some recovery, uh, boy, is it adult children of alcoholics? I think that's where I first saw it. So I grew up in a, in a violent alcoholic home. And I remember the first time I went to ACOA and I went to Karen Institute uh, for this recovery thing. And they had a sheet of paper with like pictures of faces smiling sad. I feel, and there were all these emotions and I didn't know what they were. I felt mental anxiety and they kept saying, that's not a feeling. I had no idea what feelings were. Imagine how inconvenient it would have been for me to feel anger at being beaten pretty inconvenient, right? So, you know, being the good girl, I've come from that side of it. So perhaps this is why in my correction, I'm very sensitive to those individuals who still do not have a voice and who still don't know what is okay and what is not okay. But it does start on the most simplistic terms with us getting in touch with, if you have to pretend you're four years old, what do I feel? I feel sad. I feel tired. I feel scared. Start with that. And that's how you begin to tune into yourself. Then honoring that is how you begin to heal. And that's the process. Okay. By the way, anybody listening to this that absolutely relates, you're not flawed. You're not horrible. You're not a mess. You are a human being that was thrown into a certain circumstance that perhaps at this moment in life, you do not know why it has come to help you, but trust me, it has come to aid you. Our job is to turn that pain into a positive outcome, to take the chafing and the challenge and to harness that through alchemy and make this a positive for you, for your life expression, for your correction. Pain is not given to us to torture us. Pain is given to us to make us move. We are a lazy lot. We do not want to move unless there's pressure behind us. You know, so pain is nature's way of going, come on, move, move, move. If we don't acknowledge the pain, you all know it starts as a tap and then it starts as a push and then it starts as a slam. So if you're really getting slammed by life, Step back, take a look at what's going on and make a correction because there's something you're doing over and over again that you're resisting and we want you to pay attention to it. Okay, so let me see what else is um, here. Sad, angry, scared, happy, tender. Describe how you feel using these emotions. That's right. Um, let's see. Uh, what should you do when you feel an emotional connection and your partner doesn't? Ken. Are you in partnership with this person and you're feeling an emotional connection to them and you feel that they're disconnected to you? That requires a conversation because then you have to figure out what's going on in the relationship. Okay. Um, let's see. 
What is more important, love versus comfort, money, safety, respect? Okay, Rena. Now, I am not going to make a judgment call on what people choose. I mean, uh, there are all sorts of ways that people want to live their lives. I have my idea of what is esteemable, but that's my reality. And the one thing you get here is your reality. You get to choose the life you want to live. It may be superficial to others. It may be meaningful to you. Depending upon where you come from, those people who do not have access to luxury goods or signs of status that have felt that they've had to struggle their entire lives to prove themselves worthy, that other people have bullied them or looked down upon them, any sign of um, economic security, flash, uh, you know, designer things, cars, status is incredibly important because it's compensating for times that they did not have it and were probably not well treated because of it. Um, so we each get to choose what we value the most. I know what mine are, you just have to know what yours are. And don't be afraid to change. If at one point in your life, you thought the most important thing in the world was love, then you found somebody who loved you. Then you realize that the person you loved uh, was a compulsive gambler, uh, you know, didn't go anywhere, they were unambitious, and you leave that person, and now you esteem somebody who's ambitious and upwardly mobile because you are as well, that goal would change. Doesn't mean you're superficial, just means that you've changed. So I hope that helps you with this. Let's see. Um, please help. I dated two plus months and got dumped. He said he wants to be with me, but doesn't want to be alone. <sighs> Don't want relationship more. I can't accept this. What to do? Got my stuff in his place, broken hearted. So does it mean he, he wants to be with you, but he wants to be alone? Is he saying that what he'd like is a friend, uh, he's looking for friends with benefits or he's looking for a no strings attached or he's looking for more private time? You need a better definition so clearly he does not want the term relationship. And if you want the term relationship and you want the rules that go with that, this is not a match for you. I would ask you to calm yourself down. You've already left. Okay. I would really like you to do some digging. <laughs> Flower life, you got my attention. I would like you to do some digging and ask him exactly what is it that you can do and what is it that you can't do? I've asked guys that I met when I was dating bad boys. I would say directly, what are you good for? A night, a weekend, two weeks. I had them answer me. They told me the truth. One guy said, I'm good for one month. Nobody gets hurt. Nobody falls in love. I said, let me think about it. It can be that simple. It really can, you guys. Just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be the heroine or hero in your own movie. If you could do the script, why not say it, right? Ava Hart, is there trust after betrayal and the one who betrayed and how to get there? Is that what you want to talk about, Ava? So thank you so much for being my moderator. Really, really, really do appreciate it. And Alex Flips, I know he was busy and had to do some things. So Ava, I really appreciate it. Is there trust after betrayal? It is harder to get back. I will tell you honestly that it is harder to, it's hard to clean that slate. It may take a while. So the best thing somebody can do once they've been betrayed is the next person you go to, go to somebody who's safe. They may not be so exciting. No more wild horses, okay? No wild stallions. Don't go for the, you know, don't go for the crazy girl that's hot. Don't go for the guy that can't be captured that's aloof. Just don't. Do the opposite. Get your bearings there so you can then, through real life experience, incorporate what it feels like to feel safe and get into your body of understanding what it feels like to be in a relationship where you're safe. Okay? That's important. Okay, Flower Life. Let's see. Hello, Susan Winter. You are amazing. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Flower Life, for showing up. And listen, all of you, next week is Christmas Eve. I am going to do the show. 
I was staying here in New York to get a medical procedure. They just canceled it. So my ticket is out of here at the end of the month. But I'm going to be working Christmas Eve at the two o'clock show. And my topic is going to be single and alone at the holidays, the holiday blues. I want you to join me. I will not be here. Um, let's see. What is it? Uh, at the, the 31st. I will not be here for that show. Um, I have a previous engagement. I am entertaining privately, if you know what I mean. So I'm out for that day. Okay. Is it a problem in my 20s? I tended to be more jealous. Oh, wait, I started to read this. Where did you go? Is Okay. Metal. Is it a problem that in my 20s, I tended to be more jealous on women or chick I liked, but now I'm 29, almost 30, and I'm open like into polyam? No. If it works for you, it works for you. And don't be surprised if you flip back. Part of us knowing what we like is tasting from the entire buffet table of life. And you're never going to know what you like until you've tried things. Don't assume that you only like what people have given you, okay? Don't assume that you're going to be happy uh, doing what you're told to do. Sometimes you have to get out there. Okay, Carmela, 199. Thank you. Oh, that's a little, oh, that's a, that's a vacation bag. I like that. That's a little suitcase. Yes, I like that. Thank you, my dear. Uh, Diaras, uh, 99 cents. Thank you, my darling. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, JK. Love you. Thank you. I'll piggyback on you, Ava. Okay, let's see. Susan, I'm married and I have a family gathering on Christmas Eve, but I will be watching you. Great. Well, it's early enough. You know, um, this is wonderful. Okay, James, here we go. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are going to be with me. We'll talk about some positive things here too, but I do know. So I, I think I've told you guys, um, you know, my mother had a lot of time, uh, hard times during the holiday and she, poor thing, you know, she had such a glamorous life and yet she thought that every every Christmas and every holiday should look like a Norman Rockwell Christmas. And, you know, we were a very small family. It was me. And it wasn't always a Norman Rockwell Christmas. And she always thought everybody was having a better time. And she felt such, uh, I think, social pressure to be happy and, and to have the looking good family. And she was so astounding in her own achievements. And she really got the blues. And comparison is killer. So let me, let me, I will be here for everybody if you're going through that. James, let me get back to you. My ex reached out. I remember this before, so I'm hoping this is helping me. My ex reached out stating she wants to fix issues. Okay, that's good because I remember you writing this, okay, before. But after a week, she has gone cold and doesn't want to work, saying she isn't in the right state. I wanted it to be less stressful, like dating advices. Um. So James, it sounds like you are still open to this and when push comes to shove, she's not. So normally when we're talking about an ex and you're willing to give time to an ex, the conditions for which you should be willing to give your ex a second chance, especially if they dumped you and I'm assuming she dumped you. I might be wrong, forgive me, but I might be wrong. But when a relationship ends, somebody is dissatisfied, okay? And if they're not coming back to the table trying to fix that, interested, actively trying to fix it, delighted, thrilled to show you how much they've accomplished and prove to you that they can fix it, it's simply not worth it. It's not. You were already hurt by this person once. They didn't cut the mustard once. Maybe things happen, I get it. I don't know the exact story. But please be careful about people coming back in a second time. If they come back in the second time, they've got to want to make a change. Otherwise, please don't bother me. Really, all of you, don't come, don't let somebody come creeping back into your life to just fumble around a bit. What, what, what? If they've come back with the intention of fixing what was messed up and showing you a better future, yes, welcome, please, delighted. Otherwise, no. Okay, James, I hope that helps you. Thank you so much. Mona, hang on here. Mona, 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 1,000. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for the great uh, tips. How can I overcome the fear of rejection for looking clingy because I want to ask what's going on with my partner? 
So I think you have a situation ship or you have a relationship where you feel like they are backpedaling and you're afraid to find out. So let's play it backwards. They may have already left. You kind of sense it. If you're this uncomfortable and you can't even talk about what's going on, you've got no security in this relationship. So it proves to me you are not on solid footing to begin with. In essence, you don't have much to lose because you didn't have much there. I'm not saying you weren't involved. I'm just saying you weren't in a relationship that was up to your abilities. So start simply say, I feel blank, blank, blank. Let's talk about it. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. If your partner dodges, avoids, evades, then jump to the chase simply for resolution and clarity. You've got to be willing to turn on your heel and walk away. Not knowing and not asking delays. And what does it mean? Are you delaying in the hope that they'll change? Are you delaying hoping for a miracle? Or are you delaying the inevitable because you kind of don't want to be alone and having something is better than nothing and it happens to be the holidays and God, what a horrible time to break up, but you don't even know if you're going to see them over the holidays because you don't even know if you're still with them and you're afraid to ask. So I would personally, I advocate resolution, bite the bullet, figure out what's going on, get past it, have a new, have a new holiday season come up. Um, please, you probably already know you're being rejected. Accept it. Listen, everybody on this channel, everybody in the world, we've had cases we've won, we've had cases we've lost. Resiliency, you don't want to be 100% dumping people. That means you were never invested. You know, you're going to, even the best athlete has a couple losses under their belt. They do. They have days that they were off. They have things that they misjudged. It would be illogical to think that we will never be rejected and we will never be hurt in love. So just get with it. That's the program. That's the price we pay. These are the terms and conditions. You don't get to re renegotiate. Like, do you get to renegotiate with Apple every time you update your phone? No. These are the terms and conditions with love. Don't be afraid. It's okay. Mona, thank you. Darius, thank you. Thank you, 499. Uh, thank you so much for, for nothing, just for thank you for being here. James, so avoided relationship discussion, which she liked. Um, was I wrong not acknowledging her coming forward to talk uh, or her honesty and should have been verbally appreciative? I feel she is avoid avoidant now. Okay, now... This thing came rolling out and I gave you nine different scenarios for each version of what this could have been. If she came forward and she was honest, thank her. Yes, that's a correction you can do. Apologize. I didn't realize you were coming forward. You were being honest. This was difficult for you to say. I really do appreciate that. Um, yes, you should have been verbally appreciative. If you can do a reset, try to. I did not know what was going on. So you've been given a lot of different, um, sometimes when I describe these things here, I give you 15 different ways to play it and I'm sure one of them is gonna work. And for everybody else listening, maybe you got your answer out of the same question. So thank you again, thank you very much, James. Let's see who else do we have here. I might have missed some more super chats. Alex, Darius had this, okay. Okay, thank you so much, Alex. Could I have some advice on detaching from an ex who I have a child with? Okay, now we're putting it all into perspective. He makes it so hard because he insists on more even though he is in a relationship. Thank you. You can't detach from an ex with whom you have a child. <laughs> um, you will need to be in contact, but you will need to be honest with yourself as to what is possible and what is not possible. If this person no longer wants to be romantic with you and there is no future for you together, you will have to learn to appreciate them as a co-parent. That's the bottom line on that. And Alex, you're awesome. Thank you so much for that. Amani, love you, Susan. Your videos really helped me to move on after a bad breakup. That is so cool. So did you see breakup triage? Because that's really good, too. Uh, keep fantasizing on healthy love, but the fantasy is no reality. 
Okay, so Tofa, is that what you're telling me that you keep fantasizing about a healthy love? It'll come, it'll come. So don't worry about that. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Did I miss anybody here? Darius, I got you. James, Darius, again. Mona, let's see, James. Okay, did I miss somebody? If I missed anybody else, please let me know. Samantha, your $5, I thank you, you guys. So are we clear on this, what healthy love is? You, you might not have seen it in your life. Do you think putting yourself out there is necessary? Yes, Jenny A. I keep to myself and I'm very shy. Very hard for people to know if you're interested. I do understand. Two of the guys I like, never told them. Yeah, okay. Recently got married. I keep to myself mostly. Jenny, if you keep doing what you keep doing, you're going to keep getting what you keep getting. This is why um, I have a video, you guys. It's really simple, and it's, it's the power of I like you. It's one of my proactive videos where I know it seems simple, and you can't walk up to somebody on the street and do it. I've had guys do that. Say, Susan, it doesn't work. I walked up to a girl on the street. No, 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 you can't do it. You've got it. It's somebody you know. You've got to be able to say, I, you know what? I really enjoy our discussions. I, I really enjoy talking to you. Or you seem like such a cool guy. Or, oh, my goodness, you, you know, I really like you. You are such a wonderful person. Just give them a green light. I do understand it's hard when you're shy. Actually, you guys, I am shy too. I have learned how to speak and sing and perform in front of thousands. Um, you take me by myself into a party, into an environment where everybody knows each other and I know nobody. And I've been thrown into that fishbowl so many times. I am so uncomfortable and I don't drink. So it's not going to get better. You know, if I were getting a high on, it's like I couldn't care less, but I'm not. So it's really, I'm shy too. And I'm shy about putting myself out there. I'm really good at relationships. I'm really uncomfortable dating. I have to be honest with you. I don't like online any more than you guys do. And I rarely if ever do it. So, you know, I am with you on a lot of these things. Don't think you're alone. Uh, this is why for people like myself and for people that are shy or more reserved, finding um, a community, finding a group of people with whom we share common interests is oftentimes better. The gym or a club or you know, whether it's, um, I don't know, a sporting event, uh, a hobby, when you can find these things and it's a group setting, you have a better opportunity to meet like-minded people and possibly somebody who is available that you find intriguing, who finds you intriguing. Okay, so that's one of the preferred ways. Let's see what else we have here. A spearmint. He invited me to a New Year's couple dinner, a New Year's couple dinner some weeks ago. So now I have... No time to change my plans and we'll sit alone. I'm so sad. I just want to celebrate with him. Don't want to go get my stuff back. I think I'm coming in on the middle of a discussion. Um, so I think everybody else has been talking to you, Spearmint. Uh, let's see. Jenny A., thank you so much, Susan, for answering my question. You are welcome. Uh, Kazia. Uh, Susan, thank you for allowing me to set standards and boundaries in knowing who I am and what I want in a relationship. Oh my God, this is wonderful. Kezia, this is fabulous. I love hearing this, thank you. Ken says, Susan, to clarify my last question, we broke up because he didn't feel an emotional connection, but I definitely did. I still love him, but he's in a rebound relationship now. Why do I think, have you also written me for a video on this? Um, this sounds very familiar to me, or there are multiple people going through these things. Here's my problem with this, Ken. If a guy doesn't feel an emotional connection with you, even if he's in a temporary rebound, okay, I don't really trust that he's going to feel it the second time around. Is it possible? Perhaps. But why are you so dedicated to somebody so difficult? Why do you love him when you don't feel that he loves you? Is that necessary? Um, you know, I'd like to have you take an assignment 
spend the rest of the day here or spend 30 minutes when we get off this live session taking him off the pedestal. What did you imagine you were going to get from him as opposed to what you got? Because the dream, you I think you're attached to the dream, not the guy. Because you have clung to this guy that didn't seem to show up the first time. And now you're waiting and watching while he is in a rebound relationship. So this is what I don't understand. You're willing to give him a second chance. Here's how it should work. If it's going to work, he should come back off the rebound, take some time off, sit down, go, shit, I could have had a Ken. Like I could have had a V8. I could have had a Ken and I didn't. I blew it. Oh my God, how am I going to get him back? And that's how it should go for you to be happy. And if it's still you working at working the relationship, you're not going to be happy. It, why is it you? Everyone. I, from one who's been there. Believe me, I can't tell you this stuff if I didn't go there myself. I just think you can do better. That's my feeling. So intentionally overcorrecting, where did I see this? This was sounding good. I don't know. So intentionally overcorrecting to create balance and adjust your focus. That sounds right to me. Uh, that's why it's great when you could be friends first because you really like that person, their attributes. Well, you know, your friends, let's, let's admit it, your sexy friends, right? Okay. Susan, will I be able to love again? Robert writes, be in a healthy relationship after my ex-fiance left me early this year. I'm most scared I'll forget how to love someone after being hurt. Oh, no, 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 no. Love isn't a finite source. Love is an eternal. Uh, we're built to be loving creatures. It's um, we have to learn how to not love. We have to be damaged repeatedly to a point and agree with being damaged and agree to shutting down to not. I mean, humans naturally need to love and be loved. This is our, this is encoded within us. You've experienced tremendous loss. Take time. Please, please seek a professional with whom you can relate. Seek professional treatment. If you don't get the right therapist the first time, go to another and another until you find the one that hits the sweet spot and you feel like you can love again and you feel like life is worth living and you feel happy and recharged and excited about another chapter in love. And yes, of course, my gosh, that's like you can only have one love in your life. And by the way, I would rather they leave me as a fiance then discover that they're leaving me day in and day out once I'm married and now I'm stuck with you because that's a lot worse to have to work your way out of. Okay, Ben Minneapolis. Hello, Ben. How are you? How do I let women know I come from a messed up family, but I have gone no contact to get out from underneath that burden? My experience is most women are wary of men who don't come from a great family. Okay, not everybody comes from a great family. And I would explain this as succinctly as possible because women who are marriage-minded, ch children-minded, and husband-minded don't want to hear that you hate your family. They're going to think you have something against family. So you're going to need to clarify this, Ben. You're going to need to say, I have discovered, Sadly, that I come from a very dysfunctional and toxic family. And for me to readjust, to gain a healthy version of love and partnership, the one that I want to share with my partner, my wife, my family, I have to separate from them. There might be a time in the future, maybe, that I can have some contact, limited contact, or perhaps full-on contact, but not now. Now I have been instructed by my therapist. Now I have been told that the best thing for me is to ground myself in the new reality of what is healthy. And like any person trying to seek health, you want to stay, it's kind of like um, I'm healthy and I can't be around sick people because I don't want to get the sickness. And so you might develop antibodies. That might happen. It's, it's not that big a discussion. What you're really saying is your dedication to health is so great that temporarily you are putting your family aside for good reason, okay? 
doesn't mean you don't like family, but your version of it's going to be great. And thank you so much for the $10. So everybody understand what we're talking about here. Any more questions for you? Uh, Allie, I am okay to keep it casual and go and get to know him and let him heal and also not want to be in denial. How can I be healthy and honoring to myself about this? You say in the first sentence that you're okay to keep it casual and get to know him. And then you turn around and say, how can I be healthy and honoring to myself about this? So uh, I may have caught the tail end of a conversation you had with somebody else, but uh, there's what the person can give us and then there's what we want. There's also what we are capable of experiencing in a relationship and what we want. And therein lies the divide. Most of the discontent that I experience with my clients comes in the fact that they have a version of relationship for which they are indeed capable and their partner cannot match it. So what they have done before they speak to me is they have ratcheted their expectations downward to adjust to the level of what this person can give them. They will ultimately find this discouraging and they will hate themselves. But this is where I think you are. I'm not sure that casual is okay. I think you've made peace, possibly. Remember, this is like me jumping into a discussion somebody's been having for a half hour. I'm getting the tail end of it. But oftentimes we will try to make ourselves okay with something simply to participate, thinking that in time, once we get in it, we can kind of adjust to it, but maybe we can't. So the first thing is be honest with yourself. What can you do and what do you want to do? And if you want this and you realize that your partner wants you to be this, you're going to have problems because what you're trying to do is want less and be less to accommodate what they're willing to give you. Are you really okay with that? Because it is what it is. Don't delude yourself into thinking that if I'm coming here, oh, now I'm going to make it this. Because they're as stubborn in their need to have it be this as you are your need to be here. So don't discount an individual's will, right? If you want, I go to the store and I want apples. I cannot be irritated with the fact that they give me oranges when I just said give me fruit. Okay, so this is your chance to test. I don't mind people testing. I really want a relationship, but you know, they want to do, they want to do casual. I don't know how I feel about that. I like them. Uh, I'd prefer this. Let me try it. But if I try it and I realize, nope, you know what? I have to go back. I tried it. I don't want this. I only want this. Then I have to evacuate. They have to level up or I evacuate. And that's the end of that story. Okay? I hope that answers you. $20. Who is this? Carlo. Hello, Carlo. And thank you so much for your contribution. You guys, this goes into my filming fund, just so you know. Your contributions have helped to pay the DP for Best Worst Date. And you guys will be seeing these videos uh, probably in January. And we hope to do more in uh, February. And if you keep liking them, we'll keep doing them. Okay? My friend has been taking advantage of our friendship for years. She's COVID convenient all of a sudden, even though months ago she forced me to go to bars when I didn't want to and said it was okay. So Carla, what's your question here? Um, you have a friendship with somebody that is not fulfilling the terms of what you think a friend should be. Are you asking my permission to leave? I don't have a problem with that. Um, it sounds like your friend is really selfish, but the bigger issue here is that you feel the need or the responsibility to go on. So you sound like a very good person who wants to please this person and acquiesce, and that's fine until you start to really hate yourself for doing it. Right now, you're a little pissed at your friend, but in time, you may realize that the one that you're really upset with is yourself because you've gone against what was right for you in order to be accommodating to your friend. And this is 
the friendship version of what I just said to the other person a moment ago, how we amend ourselves to adjust to another person's abilities of how they want to participate with us. And we don't need to do that. If there is, listen, sometimes if they are a family member, you're going to find you have to do what you have to do. You know, you don't like Uncle Charlie, but every Thanksgiving you got to listen to him tell the same stories over and over again because it makes your aunt happy and you just adore her. Okay, whatever, you do the, you, you, you suck it up and you do it. But in this case, you do have a choice. But one thing you may want to do before you eliminate this relationship, and friendships can be eliminated too, I'd like you to consider telling your friend that there are a number of things that you have done that you really haven't felt good about and that as a friend, you would like this person to listen to your desires and to listen to why things are important to you and to respect your boundaries. And what you can do is make this a condition of friendship, meaning we've had a long-standing friendship and this could be cool if we continue, but there is something that I've become aware of, this ongoing nudging feeling inside me that it's kind of one-sided, that you're going to do what you want to do and expect me to come with you. And that's violating my boundaries. When I say no to you, no means no. Doesn't mean I don't like you. Doesn't mean I don't want to see you, but it means no to whatever that thing is. And I would like you to honor that instead of pressuring me. And then you've given your friend, just like a romantic partner, you've given them a chance to correct. And if they choose not to correct, that is your answer. That is your justification for leaving. Hang on here. <clears throat> okay. I hope that answer. And thank you so much for the $20. All right. Abo, 10 euros. Thank you, my dear. Intimate since one month after sex. She never wants to sleep over. She also told she wants separate bedrooms in a long term relationship later. <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> I have a friend that does this. She wants a separate wing and she's very honest about it. Other than she is very caring, washing, cooking, what's wrong? How to fix this? Um, why do you need to fix this? So I personally don't have an issue with this unless you have an issue with it. You're intimate. After sex, she doesn't want to sleep over. Okay. She wants to go back to her own place. She needs more privacy, but you're getting sex, right? Um, she wants separate bedrooms in a long-term relationship later on, okay? Yet she tends to you, okay, this woman has a deep need for privacy and to regroup. It sounds to me like after she makes love, we don't know what trauma she's had in her life, and we don't know how intimacy impacts her feelings of being vulnerable, but I think her need to separate from you right after she has sex is to regroup. Has she ever said those words? Regroup, I need private time, I need my space, I just... So being with you is an overextension. So she recalibrates by pulling back in, but the cool thing about what you're writing me is she doesn't go away, she doesn't um, now stop taking care of your needs. It sounds like she's giving in every way possible, but this one little thing you find odd, she doesn't sleep over, you probably want to cuddle. And if you want to cuddle and feel more physical intimacy rather than just sex, I think all you have to do is ask her, say, look, it's weird for me that you leave, but if that's your thing and you regroup, I get it. And I'm willing to work with that. Here's what I need can you give me 10, 15 minutes of cuddle time? And then the separation doesn't feel so drastic because one minute you're in my arms, we're literally making love. The next minute you're getting up to leave kind of makes me feel like, you know, you're, you should leave money on the table, on the nightstand. So I think you've got something workable here. I would just have a conversation about where this is coming from. Okay. Thank you so much for your contribution. What is this here? Okay, that's your friendship. I've read this before. I think there was another one in here and I don't want to miss them because they come up and then they go away. 
let's see. Tofa, thank you for your supportive words. I appreciate that too. You guys, I'm just about ready to sign out. Um, Yare, hi. Hi, how are you? Welcome. How are you doing? This is somebody I've worked with numerous times. Alex Flips. Um, so thank you so much, my dear. Um, listen, Merry Christmas to you. Happy holiday. I hope you and your family are doing well. I hope you get to see your family. Um, Alex, my dear, thank you so much for this. Susan, Molly had this. At the beginning, I tend to like people much more than they like me and hurt much more deeply when it doesn't work out. That's okay, sweetie. That's okay. You'll adjust. We all grow and adjust. So you attach more quickly. And that's a little bit insecurity. Um, you'll work your way out of this. So let me remind all of you the very, very, very good news about cognitive therapy, okay? Once you can state it, it's left your subconscious. If you can tell me these words, you are aware. That means, ta-da, you are in the correction. You're not looking at it like one day, how do I fix this? You're literally in the middle of the correction because when it's in our unconscious and we don't know it's there, we can't label it, we don't have words for it, it is constantly driving us. But the minute that we can say, it, I do this, 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 and do this, how can I fix it? You're halfway there. Once you know what it is, you do the opposite, All right? Not that difficult. But gee, every time I turn left, it's no good. What would you suggest? Well, Susan, maybe you wanna try and turn right. Really? Okay, I'll try that. I'll let you know how it goes. See? So what you try to do is pace yourself. Now, part of the reason that you fall too quickly and you fall too fast is you have a vivid imagination. Oh my goodness, your dream. The dream, oh my God, what they're gonna be, what we're gonna have together. I can just see it. Oh my God, we're gonna be a couple. Then we'll go to the beach. Then we'll have holidays together. You just go, I guarantee you, you kick in that dream. And then that person who's a blank canvas for your dream doesn't quite show up the way they were scripted. And then you feel badly. And then you get insecure. Then you start you know, trying to get it to work. And then it gets worse. And then something happens. And then, then you feel disappointed. So part of falling too quickly is we will dial that back in the realization that we have far too quickly built a fantasy around this person of how we would like them to participate in our lives. Great that we have a model. Great. We don't know that they're capable of doing this we still have to have that proven to us, okay? That's a great question. And thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. I really appreciate your being here for me. I know you had other stuff to do today. All of you, I, you know, I do appreciate your helping me. If I miss something that's important, I need you to show me. Um, Lena, hi, Susan. I met a good man. Lena, Lena, where did you go? Pacing, that's right. Lena, where did you go? Um, I met a good man and we're in love, but I'm scared to be in love because it past hurts. Should I just be single until I'm ready? No, no, hi, Mika. Yes, okay, just tear the cords apart. Yes, you're gonna tear the cords apart. Yes, you're gonna tear down the lights. Let's see, where are you? Oh, wet doggy, where are you? Oh, little wet doggy. Oh, the little wet doggy. Oh, the little wet doggy. Mika, are you afraid to love? Are you afraid to love? What do you think? Do you feel love? You are a wet doggy. Do we like you? You're going to go jump on the clean bed? Yes, of course I am. <laughs> so don't we all love doggies? And they just love, right? They just love. They love. Don't be afraid to love. I mean, if you've got somebody that you like right now and you're afraid to experience it, this is, you guys, we are so excited to get into the field work. Okay? All of this is theoretical until you have somebody to practice with. You have a partner that inspires you, that you may want to get to know better, that you may want to practice your skills of everything you learn here. Don't be afraid. What are you afraid of? What's gonna happen? You're gonna say no? You're gonna go back to being single? What, you've never done that before? It's worth it. 
every time we go out, if you look at every single interaction, and every single relationship, like, oh, yippee, I get to be a better version of myself. I can't wait to see how many skills I've learned. I can't wait to apply this. I heard that new thing. I can't wait to learn how to communicate that. I can't wait to see if I can get through conflict resolution. I have brought a better partner in. I've got a really good partner this time. You should be jumping up and down. I met a really good man. That should be the only thing going on here. Hey, guys. I met a really good man. That should be the takeaway we want. Not I really, I met a really good man. I'm so afraid of falling in love. Should I just stay single? No, 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 no. We want you to go and experience love and life. Listen, you, you can't play safe. You have got to get out there. You have protection. You do. You have information that serves as protection, like, knee guards, shin guards, elbow guards, but you're going to get out there and love is a contact sport. You're going to get bumped. You're going to make some, you're going to make headway. You're going to have wins, but you're going to make some bumps. You're going to get bumped along the, it, it's the way it happens. No, nothing else we can do about it. Okay. That's the way it is. So please don't crawl back into the hole of being single. If you met somebody you like, that's just beautiful. Just go do it. I'm very happy that you said this. Um, I think you guys were just about, Susan, I'd love to see a discussion on resilience. Ooh, taking care while dating. That's really good. People are afraid to talk about rejection. It's unavoidable. Exactly. Everyone is affected by it. How they can stay strong and continue dating. So let's look at um, resilience like anybody who goes to the gym or your runners or you practice a sport, the more you do it, the more you know how to recover. Like, um, so I, you know, I don't think I'm a golfer and I don't think I had but one sand lesson in my life. Now, George, my new golfing buddy out in Arizona, he's our pro. He takes me out golfing and we have a sand lesson every week. So when I get in the sand, I now, it's not foreign to me. I kind of have, uh, I don't always say I do it right. Obviously I can make mistakes. Um, there's strategic errors, there are physical errors, my timing's wrong, but at least I kind of have an idea of what's going on. That's why you tune into channels like this so that when we end up in a situation, we've got an idea as to how we can handle it. This is what we want, right? We want you informed, but the only way you learn is by doing. And if I never practice a sand trap lie, if I'm very lucky, I'll always stay in the fairway. But if there happens to be a sand trap and I get there, what am I better prepared because I know or because I've never dealt with it and I just don't want to deal with it? So I suggest that everybody practice, practice, look at each relationship like, wow, what can I get out of this? How can I apply what I didn't know last time to this one? I just think that's great. And that's what resilience is. And I think that's a wonderful discussion. Okay. Um, got my love equipment on Ava Hart. So a huge thanks to Ava Hart and to Alex Flips for being my moderators today. That's to keep all of you safe. If we have somebody who comes in and side, type, tries to take the conversation sideways and bother you guys, I'm just about ready to leave. Um, do a video on patience in the upcoming weeks. No. I don't want you to be patient. I want you to be proactive and hopeful. Patient. Haven't you been patient long enough? <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, what, what is patience? Waiting for somebody to change? Maybe I'm misunderstanding it. I would rather you put your effort into visualizing your goal and believing it's going to happen going out into the world in every moment saying, hey, I'm going to the grocery store today. You don't know, maybe that person in the, you know, looking to buy a pint of milk is my next partner. Universe, open up and show me what you got. Maybe today is the day that after everything I said to my partner, they're gonna understand what I'm saying. I think I've said it differently this time and I'm acting differently. And I think I'm trying a different tactic because I've been pushing on the same door. It hasn't opened. So now I'm going to try this. And I just see that there's so much that's good. 
I think positive self-reinforcement and all the things that we do for ourselves, uh, resilience is good. You definitely need resilience. But remember, like life, love is trial and error. And you are going to be expert daters and better yet, you're going to be fantastic partners. You are going to learn how to apply communication skills. You are going to learn how to access the truth of what you are feeling. Okay, one more. Oh, Jan. Hi, Jan, John. How are you doing? Uh, 50. Thank you so much. Sorry for joining late. So happy you could join us. How to have a realistic love without falling into a quick trap of fantasy, planning a whole life with a new person. We had that conversation with somebody else. These, um, this is what I call the dream. And I truly believe that you guys fall in love with the dream. And the person was just the catalyst. Um, they were important, but you attach everything. So I want you to get very clear on your desired love model. You keep that separate and focused as this is my goal. Similar as if you have a goal for your business. Maybe you have a number you wanted to reach this year. You have a certain amount of subscribers you want for your website. Whatever your goal, you have what you want your best tennis score to be or your golf score. You want to break 60 or 70 this year. You know, yeah, well, you want to break 70 or something like that. So you're going to have a goal that you create that's amendable on what you have as a relationship. Then you are going to look to see who matches the goal. So Jan, for you, you're not going to look at a person that you find hot, attractive, charming, and flirting with you and superimpose your goal on them. You're going to have your goal of your relationship model, and you're going to see if they fit this. You've got to talk to them. You're going to ask them about their values, ask them how they feel about it, tell them what you see as a relationship model, tell them your heartbeat, explain to them, get to know them, and see if they match that. See if they're willing to level up to it. That's it. That's how you do it. So it's like you have a part to offer. Leading lady, leading man. And you already know the play. And you know the contents of the play. So all you're doing is the casting. You're not going to change the play for the person. You're going to find the right person for the play to keep the integrity of the play. This is what you're doing. This automatically takes the focus off the person being the goal and puts it on your end desire. Who is the right person for you to experience this end goal desire of the kind of relationship model that you want? If you don't know what relationship model you want, check out my a la carte class. That's the one hour where we go through exactly what you want to create. Doesn't have to look like anybody else, can be uniquely yours. Look at all these hearts. I thank you, Luna, forever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys, I'm going to go. Let's see. I used, I used to joke that I prayed for patience and got pregnant. After that, I prayed for any other gift than patience. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Looking forward to that video, Susan. Thanks a lot. Um, you guys, so next week, I'm going to be with you. Okay, we are going to talk about, for those of you who are single on the holidays, those of you who feel alone on the holidays, even if you've got a partner, those of you who have holiday blues, okay? Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Do not be upset about the adverts. They are going to come. I have to, once they load, God knows when they load, and I catch it, I eliminate the, the bundle of them, okay? Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Thank you, Super Chatters. You can join me on SusanWinter.net to see my consultation packages. And I wish you well, all of you. Thank you. Megan, I didn't see your question. And if you did it in a super chat, I will find it. I do not know where it is. Uh, Megan, yes. As a, Okay, five, five pounds. Thank you. As a woman seeking a man for marriage and children, how to best navigate online dating to find healthy love? Wow. That's an entire series. State up front exactly what you want. You don't have time to waste with somebody who might want it. Best advice I can give you is start an enormous filtration process ASAP. This person that you're looking for has to be locked and loaded and ready for marriage and children. That, that has to be the number one reason they're online and looking. 
Do not waste a moment with a person who's unsure or maybe sometime in the future. They've got to be looking and as clear as diligently as you are. And the minute you get anything that indicates that they are not on that page, you need to, to honor yourself and your dream. Move on. That's the best advice I can give you. And thank you so much for your contribution, Megan. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Mwah! Thank you for joining me. Take care. Thank you to my moderators today. Much love to all of you. Bye-bye now.